Hello world, I'm Chris Perillo and you've tuned into another live edition of the Locker Gnome Daily Report, or TLDR for short. It's your daily dose of me, Chris Perillo, and I'm geeking out over the next hour. You can tune into the entire live broadcast by heading over to chrisperillo.com and signing up Hello, to become world. one of my Perillo, patrons. Tuned into another live edition of the Locker Gnome Daily Oh, I know what I'm doing. I'm repeating myself. Why am I repeating myself? Because I've zoomed in on the YouTube chat. You can tune into the entire live broadcast. And so the YouTube video is actually playing off screen right now. Become one of my patrons. Problem solved. Not the problem of the inverted text back here, but uh, that's okay. There's no problem on your end. I am normally the only problem in the room. Today's topic, three, in my opinion, binge-worthy shows available right now on Netflix. Now, if you do not yet subscribe to Netflix, or if you haven't, or if you haven't in a while, uh, you need to take a hard look at Netflix. It is absolutely worth it. Even, and I, I'm not saying that this is what you should do, but even if you only have it for a temporary period of time, it's absolutely worth getting because Netflix is producing programming that is every bit as good as you would expect to find anywhere, whether it's online or through traditional media. It's kind of like a mix between the two. Netflix is the future of produced content, specifically within networks. And the beauty of Netflix, if you're not aware of it, after you have a subscription, you have near or if not near, unlimited access to everything that Netflix produces. And instead of, like, leaking out a show episode by episode, they give you the whole uh, season right up front. They say, okay, here you go. And then you could binge. That's what they say. It's bi You binge on it. And this is something that happens when uh, uh, you watch an entire season in one sitting. In fact, there's an episode of Portlandia, which I don't know. Is Portlandia available on Netflix? Uh, where they're lampooning... Uh, this couple who watched Battlestar Galactica, the newer Battlestar Galactica, for the first time. I, I'm not going to uh, issue any spoilers, but you have to watch the port. Just look up Portlandia Battlestar Galactica. Watch it. It's hilarious, especially if you're like me and you binged on Battlestar Galactica on Netflix. And I did. That was pretty much the first time I had binged uh, an entire show. More than just one season. And, I mean, I, 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 once I started, I couldn't stop. And so that, I, I just, I absolutely loved, I appreciated, I adored. There are three shows that I, I, I believe are must-see on Netflix. I mean, certainly I'm talking about, uh, you know, viewing it if you are an adult. If you're not an adult, I'm not sure if you'd be interested as much. Um, but you'll, you'll, you'll note... That uh, th th these are completely different types of shows, completely uh, different types of genres, in, in my humble opinion. The first one is House of Cards. They just released season four, and I, I watched, uh, after they had released it for some time, I saw a lot of chatter online. And this is usually how I discover shows. Let me go ahead and slide this in. I may have heard of House of Cards before, but given that a lot of people, these, by the way, are some of the patrons who support my live broadcast, you can binge on me if you want. I wouldn't recommend it, uh, but uh, I would recommend binging on House of Cards. The uh, uh, the way that uh, you know I discovered it was hearing about it over and over again in my social feeds, and that's when I was aware. Like, okay, a lot of my friends or the people that I follow seem to like the show. So, given that I, I have liked uh, similar type of shows uh, like political intrigue, suspense, uh, mis some, not, not I wouldn't say mystery, but um, just just element of. Uh, um, how would you how would you describe it? I'm sure they would describe it as a drama, but uh, there were just elements that just that really jumped out at me, and I've really appreciated Kevin Spacey as an actor in, in general. And I thought he knocked it out of the park with the, the first season. Uh, second season came around, I was pulled in deeper. Third season, I can't say it was my favorite of the three. I haven't yet binged on season four, so please, no spoilers. Uh, and I definitely do not want to share spoilers, but I believe that if you watch season one of House of Cards on Netflix, you'll be pulled in and you'll watch it all the way through uh, season four. Um, one show that you, that I know of you cannot binge, at least on Netflix, is, uh, and I have to throw this in there because I'm reminded, Hello Greedo, who produces Star Wars content on YouTube and is active in social, great guy, uh, he binged on Game of Thrones. So he's ready for this next season, and they just released the season six? trailer and I, of course i'm just i'm 
giddy with anticipation. I binged the first season of Game of Thrones. That was on HBO, though. So HBO and Netflix, they're kind of doing this. But you win because they're trying to win you over with great content. House of Cards is nothing like Game of Thrones. Well, maybe a little in terms of political intrigue and power plays and everything. Uh, but even if you don't find yourself someone who's, who's necessarily inclined to uh, enjoy political thrillers, I think you'd still enjoy House of Cards. The second one I'd recommend, and this is definitely for the adults, is Jessica Jones. And I, I gave a reaction video after I binged on the first season of Jessica Jones, uh, after having watched uh, Marvel's Daredevil, which you could also binge on uh, on Netflix. And it's recommended, but not as highly as Jessica Jones. And you'd think, well, Daredevil sounds more exciting than Jessica Jones. Yeah, but no, 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 no. I, I honestly believe that the way they executed Jessica Jones, uh, but midway through the season, I couldn't stop. And I never felt that way with Daredevil. Daredevil, I started and I kind of like, oh, I'll watch it when I get to it. But Jessica Jones was one of those things that I watched the first episode. I was like, I wasn't sure, sat on it for a while. But then after a, a two, three, four, midway, I couldn't stop watching. And then I was up in the middle of the night. Um, I'm going to give a bonus shout out at the end. Remind me of the bonus shout out if I do not give the, the bonus shout out here. Uh, the third thing that you can binge on, at least this was true uh, recent uh, up until recently. This is how I watched it. The Clone Wars cartoon series. You can watch all of the Clone Wars, including, I believe, the, the final uh, Clone Wars uh, season was ex available at one point in time exclusively on Netflix to stream. And that I watched that final season before then going back and rewatching everything. It's absolutely recommended. Uh, if you're a Star Wars fan, you probably have already seen it. But even if you are a Star Wars fan and you haven't seen it, take the time to binge. Watch a few episodes. Even if you don't like one episode, the great thing about the Clone Wars is that it's, it's not contiguous. And you have these small arc, short arc. So even if you're not pulled into one particular, you know, episode, the next one could be completely radically different, have uh, completely different characters, completely different plot, etc. Uh, but in totality, it, it, you know, once you've seen them all, I think you have a, a deeper uh, appreciation of, uh, well, I believe the Anakin Skywalker character in, in his fall from grace uh, in between uh, episode the movie episode two and episode three. So uh, the Clone Wars is an absolute uh, the Clone Wars cartoon series as, as opposed to the, the movie or as opposed to the Cartoon Network uh, episodic you know, short brief clips. Uh, I'm talking about the fully produced by Dave Filoni at Lucasfilm. Uh, these these uh, full episodes. It's a show. It's a great show. And if you if you didn't like Rebels. The Clone Wars cartoon series is completely different, or Clone Wars cartoon series is completely different than Rebels. But if you like Rebels, give Clone Wars a shot. So my bonus shout out is Making a Murderer. That was the only that I know of, the only Netflix show that pulled me in after episode one. The only one. And they've only got one season, and there may only be one season produced. But it's absolutely recommended. I enjoyed watching it. And again, it's kind of like a political thriller, but it's it's real life. It's docudrama. What, what would you call it? Rea it's not a reality show. Uh, but uh, these are absolutely binge-worthy shows, uh, shows that I watch on a regular basis if they're not wrapped up like Battlestar Galactica or Making a Murderer or the, the Clone Wars cartoon series. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's nice to have these uh, these shows that you can watch because there are people out there who are in your social cir circles who probably watch them as well. And it's nice to have, you know, uh, you know the shared fandom with friends or potentially uh, you kick up a new fandom. And if you're paying for a Netflix subscription anyway, binge! I mean, you've got the, the con you're paying for it anyway. You might as well watch it and figure out what's going on. And what I recommend, certainly, with, with a lot of the shows, is you, sometimes it takes getting way, midway through that first season uh, before you're, you're potentially pulled in, potentially. Um, Daredevil's second season, they've, they've been teasing it, looks far more exciting than the first season, which I was kind of, I wasn't wishy-washy, but I like Jessica Jones a hell of a lot more midway through, probably because of uh, Tennant's portrayal of uh, of uh, Kilgrave. So, and, that, and that's coming from me, not uh, necessarily a comic book reader uh, or a comic book uh, uh, fan outright, apart from the Star Wars comics at this stage. Uh, my daughter Jedi has entered the room. I may be watching her as Diana has an appointment this afternoon. Uh, she's been getting along with Joe Pa swimmingly. It's crazy. I mean, I'm serious. Like she, she's, she was all about Joe Pa yesterday. That'll be playing out in the vlog. Right now, I've got to move on to Perillo picks. Can't wait to show you uh, today's Perillo picks. I'll give you. A, here's a hint. Ford sent me three cars. They sent me three cars. I got uh, what was it? An F-150 Raptor. Uh, what is it? It's called a Mustang GT. They sent me those two. I know those two. The other one. What, baby? Oh, a plastic donut? Thank you. Ooh. Really? A Mustang GT? 
That's impressive. I I don't know what it is. New. Well, right. Well, they sent me they sent me new new what? Oh, you want up? Are you gonna help me with Perillo picks? Yes. Okay. Oh, dokie. Maybe two. One day, uh, you 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 will you will own the the what was sent to me by Ford. So that that's gonna be a part of today's Perillo picks. You can tune into that as a part of the live TLDR broadcast. After this, I'm going to be answering questions from the community of patrons, and then moving on to talking about today's news. As my daughter Jedi continues to remove every remote control uh, that I have placed underneath the desk and putting it on top of the desk. Today's free podcast highlight was brought to you by all of my active patrons from chrisperillo.com. If you want access to the full TLDR episodes, both audio, video, past, present, and future, which can be up to an hour long or longer, with even more tech insight from me every weekday, plus other bonus content without ads, and support me at the same time... <clears throat> You can sign up to become one of my supernomies too. This is just a brief taste of what I'm producing for you daily. Again, get more through chrisperillo.com.